Hey everyone, it's Jason here with Horology Middle East, and today we're going to be looking at the Bove 1930 Demio. Bove launched the 1930 collection back in 2015, and it's the brand's entry-level offering. The collection was actually inspired by a pocket watch from Mr. Pascal Rafi's personal collection. Pascal Rafi, of course, is the brand's current owner and CEO, and he says that the 1930s is basically when the changeover from pocket watches to wristwatches was completed. Now the collection has two different uh, types of watches on offer. There's the Demir collection as, and there's the Fleur collection. The Demir watches resemble standard uh, wrist watches of today. So you have the standard lug design and you've got the crown sitting here at 3 o'clock. The Fleur watches however are a bit different. They're more pocket watch in their, uh, more pocket watch inspired I should say. So the crown sits at 12 o'clock and uh, there's a slightly b different uh, lug design. The watch that's sitting in front of you is from the Demir collection, and the reference is RNTS0009. The retail price with Ahmed Siddiqui and Sons uh, is $18,000. So this watch has a three-part stainless steel case, and all three parts are finished with high polish. Case measures 42 millimeters in diameter, and it's about 9.5 millimeters thick. As you can imagine, there's also an exhibition case back, which we'll get back to later. Uh, coming back to the crown, you can see it here. It's really beautiful to look at. Uh, Bove has put a sapphire right into the crown. And in terms of proportions, I think the crown kind of perfectly suits the rest of the watch. The one comment I will make here um, is that the crown, you know, when you're actually using it, uh, it doesn't offer the most grip, so you might find your fingers slipping on occasion. Beyond that, uh, when you're actually using the crown to wind the watch or set the time, the uh, the feel you know is is really quite nice. Now, in terms of the watch's face, um, there's a lot going on, and you know Bowie has done some really interesting stuff here. Normally, on uh, your typical wristwatches, you'd have a dial staring back. You, you know, the, basically the whole front face of the watch would be the dial surrounded by the bezel. Here, however, you have two dials here, uh, you know, in this kind of horizontal eight arrangement. And they're surrounded by what is basically the back of the base plate of the caliber. And that entire uh, base plate is finished here in circular quartz to Geneva, or Geneva stripes. Now, coming back to the two dials, on the right side here, you've got the um, hours and minutes, and on the left side, you've got the running seconds. Both are finished with the ivory polished lacquer and have Arabic numerals on them. Everything is in uh, everything is in black, so there's quite a bit of contrast going on. Overall, I like the, the look of the dial. You know, it's really attractive. And um, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, you know, down here at six o'clock, you've actually got a power reserve indicator. And on the opposite side at 12 o'clock, you've got this other aperture, but it doesn't really serve any purpose. You know, it's just, um, I think it's just there to balance out the look of the dial, which I think it works out quite well. It looks really attractive, as I said. Overall, I think uh, Bowie has done really a really good job with uh, the look of this uh, watch's face. If you actually check out the website, you'll see that they have uh, within the collection a number of different variations. So, you know, there's probably something for everyone within this collection. Now, flipping over, going to the movement. Let me just give this a quick wipe. So through the exhibition case pack, you can see the caliber that Bowie designed specifically for this watch. It's called the Caliber 15 BM04. And you can tell that it was designed specifically for this watch because of the size. The caliber basically fills up the entire case pack. You know, there's no negative space, and Bowie hasn't kind of covered up any of the, uh, hasn't had to cover any of the space by bringing in the, uh, bringing in the case pack. The caliber is hand-wound, as you can see. It features one day, uh, uh, one barrel and seven days of power reserve. It beats at three hertz, and you know I think like the dial, there's quite a bit of symmetry that uh, Bowie has intentionally kind of put in here. If you look on the left side of the caliber, you can actually see that you've got these two big bridges. They're both about the same size, roughly, and running through them, you've got this nice separation that it almost looks like a river running through. Um, you know, two landmasses. You've got a lot of nice decoration and details on this caliber. You've got a f quite a few blue screws that uh, you can see. The uh, two main plates that you, uh, sorry, two main bridges that you can see here have circular quotes to Geneva. The uh, this side of the caliber's base plate has perlage, 
finish on it and it kind of goes around the entire caliber as well on on the on the edges you can see and even on the right side here there's a bit of symmetry you've got you know down here you've got the um, uh, balance wheel on a single bridge and on the opposite side you've got another single bridge with the rest of going through and running through so really nicely designed caliber and uh, as I said you know there's quite a lot of decorations you've got um, hand chamfered bridge edges and uh, yeah I think it's you know what you get uh, well it's exactly what you'd expect for a watch that cost eighteen thousand dollars so let me just put the watch on the wrist now and give you some varying impressions just give me a second there we go so let me just give this a wipe again so here's the watch on the wrist. Um, I have 7.2 inch wrists and I think the 42 millimeter case size looks just right. You know, it fits uh, beautifully. You can see the lugs kind of bring uh, bring the strap in really nicely. And given the thickness of this watch, you know, you're not gonna have any trouble getting this under shirt cuff or suit cuff. On this particular watch, you get a black alligator leather strap, which I think perfectly complements the uh, watch's face. And the other nice thing is you get a signed um, pin buckle. I prefer these uh, to deploy in clasp, especially on more classy watches because, you know, it just, uh, I don't to me, it just seems to fit the watch better. So, yeah, overall, I think Bove has done a fantastic job with the 1930 Demir. Uh, I think it's a great entry point with the brand and, you know, it'll give you a good um, overview of uh, what the brand's capabilities are without costing you a fortune, uh, relatively speaking. So that's about it in terms of this review. If you found it useful, please do like and share it. And as always, please do subscribe to my channel so you get updates on when I post future videos. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching.